Hi everyone, I'm Shelly and you're watching There's No Place Like Home. I'm back with another question the narrative video and today's topic is mud flood, melted mountains, and the day of the Lord. I had been preparing to do another video about an interesting theory that I've come up with about resets, but I realized that I would not have time to get that video done tonight just because it's already late, but I wanted to share things that I have been coming across both in my email and that the Lord saw fit to drop into my inbox just recently, which is one of these photos here. This is one of many that were sent to me and I will go over that email in a bit as well. But as I found the original email, which I'll be reading to you in a second from someone about mud floods and the day of the Lord. I realized that this is tying in exactly with what I've been thinking about regarding resets. So I wanted to go over this with you. I think this will be a nice way to segue into a longer video next week about the millennial kingdom and some ideas I've had regarding resets. So as you can see, I actually was sent this email back in November. So it just goes to show that it does take me a while to go through my emails. And also it just takes me a while to find a way to tie it in with the things that I've been discussing. But I do read your emails, I do go through them, and I do use the ones that I feel will be able to fit in with whatever topics I've been studying. And this one is about mud flood and melted mountains scriptures. And I wanted to go over that with you today because it's something that I have been thinking about regarding the Bible and resets, because we often think of the more prominent, what we would call resets in the Bible, like the Tower of Babel and Noah's flood. But there are many, many more resets that are spoken about, and it's a possibility that these types of resets may have been going on throughout history, even closer up into modern times. But that's what I'll be getting into next week. Let's just read what Jackie, I hope I'm saying that right, has to say. Hi, Shelley. For a number of years now, I've been looking into a lot of the same subjects you've been covering. I really enjoy your videos. Not too many believers want to discuss what we see as truth being uncovered. Since scripture is our source for truth, I've been looking into what may have caused the melted mountains and structures and the ground covering old buildings. I've come across a number of scriptures that may possibly be the answer. We debate if the millennium has come and gone, but perhaps there's a different understanding to what caused all the destruction. Could it be possible that the day of the Lord's anger was already carried out on the previous sinful generation? Actually, I've come across several different episodes called the Day of the Lord in the Bible. We know Yah has sent many judgments on people in the past, so why not consider that he did so again in the last 100 to 150 years as prophesied? Here are some of the scripture verses that may give us more insight. And I'm going to go over these verses with you. I have them all pulled up already. So we're just going to read the rest here. Here are some of my thoughts. Perhaps the mountains were twice as big as they are now. And the melting of the mountains caused the mud flood. And the fire of his indignation burned structures as well as destroying an evil populace. It's a paradigm shift from the thinking that God only did things in the ancient past and will one day bring judgment in the future, but doesn't work throughout all ages, even ours. Thanks and keep seeking your sister in Yeshua, Jackie Drayfall. Thank you so much, Jackie. This is so insightful. Thank you for all of the scriptures that you have shared. We're going to be taking a look at them. And yes, this does fit perfectly with what I've been thinking about in that we always look at the judgments in the Bible as only happening during biblical times, but we forget that he is the God of us too. He is our God. He was the God of a hundred years ago. He was the God of a thousand years ago. And why would he stop judging nations that are going against him just because we look at the Bible and think, okay, well, the Bible's been written in completion. We're done. Let's close it. None of these things are going to happen for the rest of us because they're not written in the Bible. No, I don't think that's the way that we should look at these things, but let's read some of these. So Micah 1.4 tells us, 
and the mountains will melt under him and the valleys will split open like wax before the fire like waters poured down a steep place how many videos have we have we seen recently about what look like melted structures melted mountains melted buildings i'm going to read the king james verse also i'm not going to keep reading both for all of them but i just will for this one and the mountains shall be molten under him and the valleys shall be cleft as wax before the fire and as the waters that are poured down a steep place next i'm going to go to nahum 1 5 and i just wanted to tell you that the other email that i'm referring to that he actually shared a bunch of photos that he took that perfectly illustrate like these two emails seem like they should just go together and the photographs that i'm going to be sharing with you perfectly illustrate these verses so nahum 1 5 says the mountains quake before him the hills melt the earth heaves before him the world and all who dwell in it isaiah this is isaiah 13 and let's see i'm gonna go back because i probably forgot where this one started I, okay 9 to 13. Behold, the day of the Lord comes, cruel, with wrath and fierce anger, to make the land a desolation, and to destroy its sinners from it. For the stars of the heavens and their constellations will not give their light. The sun will be dark at its rising, and the moon will not shed its light. I will punish the world for its evil, and the wicked for their iniquity. I will put an end to the pomp of the arrogant, and lay low the pompous pride of the ruthless. I will make people more rare than fine gold, and mankind than the gold of Ophir. Therefore I will make the heavens tremble, and the earth will be shaken out of its place at the wrath of the Lord of hosts in the day of his fierce anger. Isaiah 24, 1-6 says, Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty, and maketh it waste, and turneth it upside down, and scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. And it shall be, as with the people, so with the priest, as with the servant, so with his master, as with the maid, so with her mistress, as with the buyer, so with the seller, as with the lender, so with the borrower, as with the taker of usury, so with the giver of usury to him. The land shall be utterly emptied and utterly spoiled, for the Lord hath spoken this word. The earth mourneth and fadeth away. The world languisheth and fadeth away. The haughty people of the earth do languish. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof, because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore hath the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men left. This really makes you think of all of these photos where it seems that there are no people to be found anywhere doesn't it isaiah 42 15 says i will lay waste mountains and hills and dry up all their vegetation i will turn the rivers into islands and dry up the pools Isaiah 54, 10 says, For the mountains may depart and the hills be removed, but my steadfast love shall not depart from you, and my covenant of peace shall not be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. Psalm 97, 1 through 5. The Lord reigns, let the earth rejoice, let the many coastlands be glad. Clouds and thick darkness are all around him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him and burns up his adversaries all around. His lightnings light up the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. Isaiah 64, 1 through 3 says, Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains might quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil. 
to make your name known to your adversaries, and that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome things that we did not look for, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. Isaiah 2, 19 to 21. And people shall enter the caves of the rocks and the holes of the ground from before the terror of the Lord and from the splendor of his majesty when he rises to terrify the earth. This reminds me of dumbs. It reminds me of the bunkers that the, we'll, we'll just say they like to think of themselves as the elite, even though they are not, but the ones that they are building for themselves because they know that something is coming and where are they going to go? They are going into, they're going underground. And where is that? We can think of those as the caves of the rocks and yes, the holes of the ground. It even makes me think of Darren Kuyu. Could that possibly have been another place of refuge during a prior reset? I don't know, but that's what that, this makes me think of. And yeah, I'm going to be going into this more in depth in my, hopefully Lord willing, in my next video, which will be out again, Lord willing, next week. In that day, mankind will cast away their idols of silver and their idols of gold, which they made for themselves to worship, to the moles and to the bats, to enter the caverns of the rocks and the clefts of the cliffs, from before the terror of the Lord and from the splendor of his majesty, when he rises to terrify the earth. I strongly believe that this is something that has happened again and again and again. There is a cycle and many of the people that we call our controllers know that there is a cycle and that is why they are always prepared. Isaiah 66 verses 15 to 16. For behold, the Lord will come in fire and his chariots like the whirlwind to render his anger and fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire will the Lord enter into judgment and by his sword with all flesh and those slain by the Lord shall be many. So what do you see when you look at this photo here? I see what certainly looks like something that was scorched, something that was on fire at first glance it it looks like a tree trunk to me there's also some pareidolia going on in here but no matter what it is whether this is a melted building whether this is a tree trunk whether it is the remains of a petrified giant this was burned this email is from Rick S and again I just want to point the date out to you that this is from December of 2022. So again, yes, it sometimes it takes me a while to get back at and look at things and to even share things, but I'm doing it slowly but surely. But anyway, it says, hello, Shelly, I really enjoy your videos. The most recent concerning trolls led me to share with you ones that I have seen. I am from Idaho and there are so many very questionable formations, which include things that look like faces and other body parts. Southwestern Idaho in the Awahees, I don't know if I said that right, are a bunch. There is this one called Old Man of the Mountain. You need to put in Awahee or you will get the more famous version. And this is the Old Man of the Mountain Awahee. So I have that one here. Yes, this certainly does look like it is some sort of petrified humanoid being. It could also be some sort of structure. It could also just be rocks. But if you are looking at this, yes, it certainly does seem to look like some sort of humanoid. And you have to think, if some of these titans could be petrified, how were they petrified? Well, many of them may have been petrified when the mountains did melt and possibly that that is how many of them ended up kind of cleaved together was through the melting. Um, also, I have personally taken pictures of items that look like a giant hand or a foot sticking out of the ground and other things that I cannot fathom, which may have been a giant melted structure or something. So, and that is, I have those right here and I'm going to share some of these with you because they are very, very interesting. So if you look at this one here, this to me looks 
like a hand. It looks like the fingers are curled down here. This could be a thumb, wrist, forearm. Over here, I don't know how large this is, but these, they, they almost look like openings um, to a building, maybe where windows were, but they could also be, you know how sometimes you find those, what are those rocks called? The sponge rocks. It kind of reminds me of those as well. Here's a close-up of what I think looks very much like a hand. Right here, we've got more scorched remains of something. Again, I'm not sure what these are the remains of, whether they are melted buildings, because they certainly could be that. This almost seems like it's the top of a turret and a tower. But yes, you, you see the charred look of something that was here before. And this is a close-up of the one that I said looked like a tower or a turret. And I'd love to hear some of your ideas of what you think it might be. Got more. This could also be the top of some sort of old structure. This is the one that I shared earlier. This, to me almost looks like hands, like um, almost in prayer, you know, like hands together in prayer. That's what it looks like to me. It looks like fingers. And you have to wonder if that's what this is, what happened to them? How did they get that way? Could this be what those verses were referring to? More evidence of something that was scorched at one point. Try to just go through some of them. This looks very interesting. Looks like it could have been some sort of buildings also melted. And this too, I was looking at this earlier too, and this looks to me like it could be a melted building. And again, I'm looking over here and I, to me, they look like openings, but again, I don't know how, how big they actually are, but they don't necessarily have to be doorways. So they don't have to be that big, but they, they do, this does look like it was once some sort of building that was, yes, that was melted. Yes. And more of the same here. Just the burned look. This is a more recent email that I just got from the same person, from Rick S. And it says, hello again. I found additional photos going through my old computer. This is in Idaho and Oregon also. And that, my friends, looks like a foot. It really looks like a foot. With the big toe and then the other toes, this is five toes, not six toes, going down. We've got the heel here. It even kind of goes in a little bit like the instep. That really does look like a petrified foot. And you have to wonder how did that get petrified? This one says stack rock overlooking Boise. And it says the top appears to have the face similar to a statue found in Bolivia. And yes, that is exactly what it looks like. It's some sort of cap on there. On here, it almost looks like a brow ridge, but it could also be some sort of cap. And there are definitely some similarities here. And he did pull up some of these just to compare it. So yes, very, very similar to what he found. And again, this was in Boy oh, it's overlooking Boise. And this is what it looks like on the actual hill. What would you call that? Rock? It's, it's buried in there. And it certainly looks like it was, what's the word I'm looking for? I could say melted together, but it almost looks like a conglomerate, a conglomeration of different things. 
and that kind of got stuck in the middle of it. So the question that you have to ask is, what happened? And if these things have happened in the past, are they still happening now? And can we be attributing these sort of instances to many of the other things that we're seeing in more recent history? Like the the other um, email said from Jackie, like 150 years ago. Could we be looking at things like this? Things that are written about in the Bible. So anyway, I hope that this at least intrigued you enough that you're going to want to check out my video next week because I'm really excited to do that one. Uh, but again, it was already really late at night and I, I didn't, I, no, it's going to take me quite a bit of time to get that one together, but I hope that you enjoyed this. And I want to thank everybody who sends me these emails because that's one thing I have people telling me all the time, women aren't, aren't supposed to teach. And I know women aren't supposed to teach, but that's not what I consider myself doing here. I'm sharing information with you. That's what I'm doing. And very often I learn more from my commenters and those who email me, then I probably teach to anyone else. I'm just here sharing my opinion, the things that I find, the things that I find interesting, because I like to talk about it and I like to share and I like to see what others have to say about it too. Anyway, that's all that I have for you today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet and would like to hear more of what I have to say, I would love if you would do that. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave one either here or over on Instagram. And if you like my work, you can check out my YouTube membership or my Patreon page. And I hope you have a great day.